In the previous video, we performed a velocity analysis on a slider crank mechanism. And now we're going to uh, do the acceleration analysis. And so going back to the problem statement, uh, as, uh, as with the velocity analysis, the same uh, mechanism we're looking at, a 50 millimeter crank, a 150 millimeter connector, and a slider block uh, at C there. And the crank is rotating at 60 RPMs. And um, for the accelerations, we have to know that that is a constant uh, speed. And so let's um, review again. We did the position analysis last time and uh, found the orientation of the connector uh, defined by this angle alpha as being 13.6 degrees. And in the velocity analysis, well, first of all, the uh, omega AB was given, but we converted that to radians per second of 2 pi or 6.283. And we also calculated omega of the uh, connector, omega BC. And that was um, clockwise 1.523 radians per second. We'll need those, uh, those values to do the acceleration analysis because um, a normal acceleration uh, has the term of omega squared times r. So uh, you can't do the acceleration analysis without doing the velocity analysis first. So let's find the acceleration of point B first. Uh, again, uh, omega is constant, so written as a vector. It's uh, uh, again 2 pi k radians per second. And the position vector of uh, B relative to A is as shown here. We did that in the velocity analysis as well. So to um, calculate the acceleration of point B, we uh, have two terms for that. One in involves the uh, angular acceleration alpha AB, but alpha AB is equal to zero because we're rotating at a constant speed, so that term goes away. But we still do, of course, have an acceleration, and that is the, the normal uh, component of acceleration, omega squared times r. Negative sign because it, it's going to be pointing from B back toward A. And so putting in our, our value that we know for omega AB and uh, the, the values of the uh, position vector, uh, we come up with this uh, expression for the acceleration of B, both components being in the negative direction, the negative x and the negative y. So again, pointing from B back toward the center of rotation A makes sense. All right, now we move on to the acceleration of point C. Now, we're going to use the relative acceleration uh, equation for that. Since we know the acceleration of point B, what we have to add to that is the acceleration of C relative to B. And since both the C and B are on the same um, uh, rigid body, we can expand the uh, relative acceleration term to be the cross product of the angular acceleration crossed with the uh, position vector and subtract then the normal component of uh, omega squared times the position vector. And so we'll plug in the things that we know here. Again, we know the acceleration of point C. And add to that then the cross product, again, with alpha BC being an unknown. But we do know that it's about the z-axis, so we'll, we'll write that as uh, alpha times k. And the last term, everything's known. We know the angular velocity BC from the position, uh, excuse me, from the velocity analysis that we did earlier again multiplied by the position vector of C relative to B. And so if we work these terms out in the I direction, first of all we have the, uh, the term minus 1.396 that comes from the acceleration of B. The next term comes from doing the cross product where we have the K cross J is minus I, but there's already a minus sign there, so those cancel out and leave us with a positive value times alpha BC. And then the third term is the uh, minus omega squared times the i component. And uh, that gives you the 0.3381 in the negative x direction as shown. So those are the i components. And similarly for the j components, we have the first one, which comes from the acceleration of point b. The second one, which comes from the cross product with k cross i being positive j. And the third one from the uh, minus omega squared times r. But again, we have two negative signs that cancel each other out there. So there's our expression for um, the acceleration of point C. 
And just like with the velocity analysis, when we come to point C, we say, well, it's on the, uh, uh, on the connector, but it's also on the uh, slider. And the slider is uh, restricted to move only in the x direction. So its j component of acceleration is going to be equal to 0. Or another way of saying it, the y component of the acceleration of that block is equal to 0. And that allows us to uh, solve for alpha. And so the alpha, the um, um, angular acceleration, turns out to be positive 9.012 radians per second squared. And since our SOLIDWORKS uh, simulation shows the uh, uh, angular uh, units in degrees, we can go ahead and convert that to 516 degrees per second squared. And let's compare that to what we get out of the SOLIDWORKS simulation. So remember we have the slider crank uh, simulated to run at 60 RPMs and we've plotted for um, one revolution. Here's the angular acceleration of the uh, connector and you can see the number here uh, a little over 500 degrees per second squared in the positive direction. So our 516 uh, degrees per second squared is, is confirmed. So what we're left with, uh, the terms in the x direction, or the i terms, now that we know alpha bc, we can plug that in. And so here's our result, minus 1.415 meters per second squared. It's a negative number, so the acceleration is going to be the left to the left, just as the velocity was. So when the crank is at 45 degrees, our calculations show that the slider is moving back to the left, and it's also um, increasing speed as it moves to the left. And so we'll show a plot of the acceleration of the slider, and you can see that our, our number at the starting point, where uh, we're at 45 degrees, uh, about minus 1400 millimeters per second squared, which again would be uh, to the left, is confirmed. The uh, maximum acceleration occurs in this general area here, and notice uh, it's actually the acceleration is relatively constant in that, uh, in that particular region. The maximum negative acceleration when we're moving back to the left occurs when we're uh, uh, at a zero velocity out at, uh, out at the far end here. And zero accelerations would occur approximately right here. So we're moving back to the left. We've increased speed till we get to here. Now we start slowing down. And another zero acceleration right here, where again we're moving to the right. We've been increasing the speed, and now we're beginning to slow down before it turns around on that end.